Hello. Welcome back to another Tiny Matter workshop hosted by uh, the uh, Research Help Service from the Inquiry Methodology uh, at Indiana University, Bloomington. So I'm Peron, uh, currently a PhD candidate and Inquiry Methodology program. So uh, today we are going to talk about uh, what should I include in the report and how. Um, so that is, what does a traditional quote and quote, uh, com and com or conventional qualitative report or an article or dissertation looks like? Um, so the reason I created this tiny method workshop is because the, uh, I have some clients that recently just came in and asked a couple of these similar questions. So for example, where should I introduce my research question? Uh, where should I? Uh, say this is the things I'm going to focus on. Um, how could I make my writing more convincing? And or uh, when students writing their course reports, they receive feedback such as, well, I think these things uh, should be probably, for example, shouldn't be put in in methodology or method section. Instead, it should be put in the writing section. Um, so and so on. Or uh, clients may ask, how exactly should I present my qualitative results? Uh, there are different ways. Um, so again, uh, here's a heads up. Uh, um, please note that this is a more traditional um, structure. That is a more typical structure of the academic writing. But please recognize that in the quantitative research field, more and more uh, different ways of representation has been created, such as using a fiction, novel, art-based, uh, or poems way of um, representation to present the findings and write the things. So uh, here we start from the basic. Uh, that in general, this is the structure that could be applied to most of the academic writing. So usually there are five, uh, five stage or let's say five chapter or five sections in such a kind of structure. Uh, the first one usually start with the introduction. That is what do you want to want to say or what do you want to ask. Uh, the second one, usually there will be a literature review talking about what have uh, previous scholars said. Um, and then there was there's always a methodology uh, section or the data section discussing what have you done to collect your data with what kind of approach. And also there, uh, the most importantly, you want to present your finding. So that is what did your data say? And um, last but not least, you may have a conclusion or discussion section talking about based on this finding, what will you say? So let's dive into that. The first chapter or the first section usually start with introduction. Uh, so for example, here's a very fun picture saying, coffee keeps me alive. But how, what's your argument for that? Um, that's just a very random uh, question, but it speaks to the purpose of this introduction section. That is what pushes you to do a study like this and what are the arguments that you are going to offer here? So usually in this section, you talk about your motivation or the background of your study. That is, you want to emphasize why doing such a kind of study is so important. Um, you could either start from your personal experience, connecting to your positionality, uh, your previous experience, or you could connect to what the status quo is lacking, uh, which could also connect to the next section that is literature review, where you could provide more details there. So here, uh, some people will start to ask your research question, uh, maybe almost at the end of the introduction. Some people, based on your writing style uh, or uh, your um, intentions of writing, you could also place this um, at the end of your uh, literature review. But here, uh, my suggestion is uh, make your argument clear. Uh, again, 
why do you work the why do you want to work on this study what's the importance of it and what are the questions you're going to ask the second uh, chapters or the second chapter uh, session is usually literature review, which is what previous scholars have said. Uh, these serves as a very good foundation for you to introduce the contents of uh, the key concept of your studies and also uh, identifies the gap uh, of what has been done and what has not been not, uh, or what has been waited for to be further explored in the field so that it kind of uh, helps to restate it or re-emphasize your argument and kind of also contributes to the importance of your study. So uh, literature review usually starts with some of the keywords surrounding your um, study. For example, your study focuses on international students' difficulties in uh, the higher education of the United States. So maybe, of course, you will start with the section discussing the study with international students and also based on how details you want to look at. Uh, for example, you may want to look at their identity or you may want to look at their financial difficulties. Uh, you may specifically uh, review some of the literature or studies around that. Uh, in some field, your uh, advisor or mentor will emphasize that what's your uh, theoretical framework. So if you have any theoretical frameworks, so for example, in learning sciences, maybe um, scholars or maybe your advisor will ask um, you if you want to use a design based research or if you want to use activity theory or if you want to use problem based learning. Um, you also kind of discuss and review the relevant theories here. So providing a background surrounding your study and also summarize and compare different findings and voices. Here is something that I would suggest not to just summarize. So there is a common, quote, uh, common mistake uh, or common weakness being made here is usually, or a lot of students, they instead of compare and conclude it with their voices, they simply listed that a uh, scholar A say something, scholar B say something, and just for the purpose of thinking, oh, I need 30 reference uh, for my dissertation. Um, that is not the most ideal. A better way of writing is you read through the things, uh, you write the things that to support your argument. Of course, you summarize what has been said, but also based on what has been said, you kind of discuss or put in your voices here. So to also include your arguments or your voices there. And further, the point is you want to identify the gap. Again, this is to re-emphasize the significance of your work. Um, so the next one is, uh, the next section is methodology or methods or and data. Uh, so this is usually if you are writing a proposal, then this is the thing what you are going to do. Or if you have already finished your study, you talk about what have you done. These are all these all based on what exactly what you have done. So uh, if you have any math, you you if your study is based on a certain methodology, which is not necessary. Um, some people have been struggling with oh because my advisor say I need to use methodology, um, based on different field. Um, but it, sometimes it's not really necessary. Some people would just say, I would just call qualitative research uh, phenomenology. Uh, that is something sometimes bother me because uh, qualitative research and uh, phenomenologies are different. Um, so, but that is totally, that is, that is something we could totally make another uh, tiny method workshop with. Um, but anyway, um, methodology if you have uh, if you don't have that's totally fine 
But the point here is you want to describe your research design, which may base on either your theoretical frameworks, for example, you are using activity theory or problem-based learning, your research design uh, and research activity may base on these. Um, and so here you describe your research site, where do you go uh, and who are your participants and what are the research activities, what kind of um, activity you have done for how long, how many times, what are the data you collected from this activity and what types of data you have to do interview, how long is the interview, uh, what are the questions, you don't have to list all the questions, but if you are writing a dissertation that your committees may want to know what are your question list. Um, so, uh, Exactly, what are those things? Um, and later you describe your data analysis approach or approaches. Uh, make sure when you choose your data analysis approach, for example, you say I'm, I'm going to use thematic analysis to analyze my um, interview data. Uh, make sure while you are describing um, your, your analytical approach, connects your practice like how you will exactly use or analyze your data based on the, the literature say. So for example, you are citing Brown and Clark uh, based on some of the stages that describe how they will, that will be shown in your analytical stage. And also most importantly is always, always keep in mind that how does these or how do these including approach, research, design, analytical approach, how do they or how could they answer your research question? This is always the most critical because some people, they just go ahead, analyze the data, while later realize ah, it's kind of, um, kind of being off from my research focus. Um, so always keep your research question in mind. So usually the fourth chap uh, chapter or the fourth section is the finding based on uh, your, after your analysis, what did your data say? Uh, the rule of thumbs in qualitative research and qualitative report is you make sure you analyze and even you write about your, write the things or write the findings during your reports you still write in a way that you are analyzing, not just restate what, uh, what, have, what the participants have said. So that is a common mistake being made easily. Uh, so for example, some people will say, I use narrative inquiry, and later while they are reporting, they basically just kind of paused the excerpt of what are their participants said and in their analysis, quote unquote, uh, or they basically just restated uh, what is being shown in the excerpt. So that is, you want to make sure you are really analyzing them. What are the hidden things or further things being hidden in these uh, narratives or in your um, in your qualitative data, not just restate what you see like later. And also, uh, if you find uh, presentations in tables or figures helpful, um, you could use them. Uh, I personally pretty like use present representation in table and figures and kind of things that helps the reader to more easily, especially when you're analyzing your data, uh, later finding you have so many things you want to conclude, it will be helpful. And also, they are both your argument and also evidence. It echoes to my uh, earlier points. I'm saying that usually you have an excerpt or uh, your uh, small segment from your exact data and you argue or you have your an analysis um, writing before or after that. And again and again, make sure your analysis and uh, your finding speaks to your research question.
last, uh, usually people will have a conclusion or a discussion. That is, what will you say based on your data? So here, people usually or commonly just conclude a finding again. Um, make sure you are not copy paste the things from your finding. And also, some people write uh, their findings and conclusion in a way that they are also doing discussion at the same time writing their finding. So it depends on your approach. There is no right and wrong way. Some people write finding, just finding. That, that means they do not cite any further literature review. They just conclude what has been found and their finding, which is kind of rare in, re in quantitative research, but that's one of the approach. Um, and they kind of start another like a discussion here, but some of them, they just do finding analysis along together with the discussion uh, in their fourth or fifth uh, section. So uh, there's no specific way that you approach these two sections, uh, as long as you feel like it makes your argument coherent and consistent. And also extend the discussion uh, and discuss the finding with literature again. Um, you know, you want to compare what you found um, from what previously have found. Uh, if they have a different kind of voices or different kind of findings there, you could further engage more theory to discuss these. And what are your contributions based on your findings or your research design? And uh, you could have future suggestion, some people specifically write about the limitation of the study based on uh, their research design or the population they reach out. And later they suggested like maybe in the future uh, study can do or focus on so-and-so and so population or do so-and-so and so research design. Um, so that's a more conventional way uh, or traditional way writing a research report or dissertation. If you want further more resources, here are some of the suggestions. And also I wanna encourage you to, uh, here's a QR code or there's a short uh, URL to the Tiny Method Workshop where our previous amazing consultants have uh, pre prepared or created uh, some sections specifically about um, writing a uh, qualitative dissertation or writing up the method section. Uh, I myself have also talking about the uh, research ethics where you can also talk about this in your writings, um, IRB and or uh, online research. So these are some of the topics if you are interested in uh, that. But if you are watching this video and later realize that there are some of the issues or topics I'm interested in, uh, please make a video about this. Feel free to reach out to us where uh, we have a shorter URL here and you can also scan the QR code to easily reach out to our website and find our content, contact uh, information. So that is today's Tiny Method Workshop. I hope you find it helpful. And again, uh, this is not, um, this, this is the things I said is not absolute step-by-step uh, -step things, uh, different discipline, different approach, um, may have different ways to work on it. So if you have ever any questions or want to brainstorm together, feel free to reach out. So anyway, have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.